actually grew up in uh, Great Falls, Montana. I did a master's at Montana State University, and uh, because of that I was able to go to New York University, NYU, which was my first choice of PhD programs, and I earned a PhD. I was actually in the process of applying for some jobs in the former Soviet Union, and I got the strangest call, and it was from a guy by the name of Ivan Pongrasik, wondering if I might be interested in coming to Hillsdale for one year. I, I first um, met Charles Steele about 15 or 16 years ago when he came to Hillsdale. I think we hit it off right away. Uh, we had very similar backgrounds, educational backgrounds, and I've, you know, I've gotten to respect him a great deal as a colleague, as a professor. I know uh, his students love him for a very good reason. I don't think I know anyone that cares as much about his students as he does. So I met Dr. Steele when I was at Prosby, and that was maybe like five years ago. I interviewed with him, and I still remember that interview I had with him. Um, he talked a lot about Austrian economics and libertarianism and like a time he got hacked by Russian hackers, and that was fun. But I've just gotten to know him better over the years. I've had maybe like four courses with him. And he's definitely my, my favorite professor. And I thought, ah, I, I've heard of Hillsdale. I know it's a reputable school. Um, well, one year, I'll, I'll go see what they're talking about. So <laughs> it's been a very long one year so far, because that was 2006. And he really, you know, is happy to sacrifice himself in order to help his students. Um, if you ever want to know where a particular student is that's uh, in graduate school, you know, maybe years ago, he, he knows. He's staying in touch with them. He's probably just exchanged a text with them two days ago or something, right? And economics is, I guess, famous for being somewhat unapproachable, like somewhat cold. So he, yeah, I think he, he gave it a personal touch that was really beneficial to me. He did some cool stuff. I, I like his photos and videos from his ultra running. I was very, our family was very interested in, we did a lot of outdoor activity, particularly in the summer. We did a lot of uh, fishing, hunting in the fall, backpack, big game hunting mostly, and backpacking and things like this. And I just was crazy about that stuff, loved it. And I thought running will be the perfect thing to do for getting in shape for hunting, fishing, backpack. I just started running on my own for that reason. And then I signed up for, along with my brother and a couple of friends, we signed up for a, we just happened to see that there was a 10 mile, it's called the mini marathon. And you could sign up as a team and have team competitions. And so the four of us signed up and I turned out to be the fastest of the four and all the rest of them ran track. And I thought, wow, I actually can run. Rocky Raccoon in Texas is the one that I completed. It's Texas, so of course it's actually 101 miles. <laughs> That's the longest run I've ever done. And that was great. That was really, that was really a, a different experience. High, highest altitude I've ever run. I've been running at 12,000 feet, but we were trying to get away from, we were climbing, we were trying to get away from a lightning storm that was rolling in. We were on the froze to death plateau in Montana. We were trying to climb Granite Peak. And uh, we just had nothing but lightning storms the whole way up. We'd set up a tent and dump, jump into it and the lightning and the storm hit. A tent doesn't protect you from lightning. Our jackets start buzzing from the electricity. And it's like they're charging up like a capacitator. If I am going to go out in the outdoors, I just love the Rocky Mountains. So Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. If I travel to other countries, I prefer third world, kind of rougher, out of the way places. I've, I've spent a lot of time in France, and that's nice, but it's not as exciting as places where Oh, we might be arrested or we might get, you know, attacked by wild animals or something, whatever it is. Do I have favorite faculty members? I can't stand faculty. They're awful. Uh, uh, as it turns out, uh, Ivan Pongrasik, I actually get along with him. It's, it, and it's sort of funny because I will often make jokes about, oh my gosh, Pongrasik in class. I'm like, oh my gosh, I like what this guy is. And, one time I was talking to one of my students and I said something about being over at the Pongrassics for dinner and she said, I thought you hated him. I said, no, this is all a joke. Uh, she said, I would never want to guess. So. Uh, he, he extremely effective at 
um, running the department here since he's become the chairperson, the chairman of the department. And uh, he's uh, actually been absolutely great in understanding what what we should prioritize, what we should be focusing on. So yeah, he's been just phenomenal. I, I feel you know, truly actually honored and um, fortunate to have him as a colleague. And the longer I've been here, the more I appreciate what Hillsdale does. Happy doing that. I mean, I think that some, someone once asked me, why do you want to teach in a uh, liberal arts school? And that's never been a goal of mine. But on the other hand, to teach in a place where uh, students really do something with the stuff that you've done in the classroom, that is different. So liberal arts school, a, a place in the former Soviet Union, I don't care. Um, if you're actually doing something that's um, having a good effect, sounds great.